Hey, welcome. I'm Andrew Malacy. You're here watching a live stream of the Hand Tooler YouTube channel. And uh, today I've got something a little different. It's the first time I've ever done this. It's going to be a live stream of me uh, resawing this 8 inch wide panel. So I'm going to do my best to interact. I have my computer set up over here. And uh, I'll warn you, it's probably just going to be a lot of sawing. I mean, that's what it is. So if, if you just want to see the end product and you're not watching this live, you can just skip to the end, I guess. But I'm hoping that there's some questions along the way and that maybe I can answer them. And I'll just do my best to answer them the best I know how, uh, what I'm doing and why, and hopefully it works out well. Before I get going on the actual uh, sawing process, I want to show you the other panel I did. I have it here under the weight of heavy boards and then whenever I can I'm actually keeping it under clamps on a flat surface. So here's the, uh, the first board I did, it's for the side of the sideboard so uh, just be aware I'm going to shift the camera. There's the sideboard right there and you're looking at the side and since it's frame and panel construction I'm going to just, these will be inset or inserted into them into some grooves along the length of them. They need to be about a quarter inch thick to fit into the grooves, but these are about these are actually a little thicker. So what I've done is I, I'm going to actually bevel the edge here so they slide in, and they will be glued like this, book matched. Actually, this is the uh, it'll be like this. So I'm pretty excited about this. These are going to be the these these were like this. They were closed, and it's going to be open like that. So what I'm making sure to do when I store them is I put these faces back together. So that way the, any moisture that was still left there, it, it leaves really slowly and doesn't cause warpage. They haven't warped so far, thank goodness. I actually did a live video of that on Instagram, but I wasn't able to save it for some reason, so whatever. That's why I'm doing this again live, but I'm doing it here on the YouTube channel, which is, has a greater reach, and hopefully you all enjoy it. Uh, so let me go ahead and check to see real quick on my feed if I can, if there's anybody there. I can see some people. Okay. Actually, I'm going to just I'm going to join the feed as a, as another channel just so I can see it because this is, like I said it's my first time. Now along the way, what I've done uh, to prepare for this, I've flattened one side. I really don't care about the other side too much, but I've used my winding sticks and a straight edge to flatten this one side here. This one's still got some marks on it. Not too worried about that. And there I am on the screen there. Um, so if you have any questions, if they, uh, if they pop up here, then I'll hopefully be able to see them. Okay. And uh, so what I've done is I've been, I've been marking off the face that I've flattened, and it's all good and straight. And uh, what I'll do then is, uh, well, what I've done is I've used a marking gauge, this one here, and I mark the thickness I want to resaw it at. So let me show you in the light a little bit better. Well, it's because I'm in the bright light. So, and it's along the top as well. And I've also made, I've drawn a little line in a different color here in black, just so I can keep myself a visual reminder of what side is the side I've marked off of. Because when I'm flipping it and moving it, I don't want to get confused. I want an actual visual reminder and a cue. I've marked the grain direction on the panel there with my, my reference mark. I've marked this as side 1A. I've marked it as side one, uh, 1B, or excuse me, 2A. So side 1, side 2, and then they're both outside, so they're side A. But that way I can actually remember how they go back together in case, I don't know, I get confused. But again, I'm trying to keep a quarter inch at least, and so I'm actually going to be, this is at least 3 quarter inches along the way, so it'll be resawing around 3 eighths maybe 5 sixteenths when I'm done. So hopefully that works pretty uh, well. And I'm going to start by establishing a reference edge. 
And what I do for this is I just take a long straight board right here. Uh, not a reference edge, I'm going to cut a kerf is what I mean to say. So I'm going to clamp this up. So I'm going to bring this up to the top of my, my bench here, that works, and clamp it down. Sorry, I'm going to move the camera, hope nobody gets sick. So the board is at the top of my bench here. This is my reference side here. I'm going to bring this board up against the edge, uh, leaving room for my kerf. And my kerf is slightly less than an eighth of an inch here because with the, the saw set and everything, by the way, I've tuned up my saw before I started this. Can you see how shiny the teeth are? So I just gave, I'd, I'd really gone through a good sharpening uh, process before I did the previous board. And then for this one, I just wanna make sure they were perfectly up to stuff. So I just took the file once over every single tooth and it took me about three minutes. Now what I'm gonna do, is I'm going to I'm going to clamp this board down exactly where I want it to be. This is how I do it because I don't have a curving plane. And if you had a curving plane, this is what you would do with it. Okay. So how's everybody Saturday, since I'm sort of hanging out here? I'm actually, since I'm a teacher, I'm on Thanksgiving break right now, so we actually get the full week off for Thanksgiving, which is amazing. But, so yeah, I have a really nice, uh, I think I have a nice week of work ahead of me here, working on the sideboard. But, uh, but anyways, so what I've done is I've brought out another saw. The reason why I did that is not because I can't use this, it's because if you look how much of the saw plate is left, it's barely anything, and it doesn't allow me to go down below that board. See how it sits up high? So I just start with another saw. This is actually a cross cut, and so it, after a couple passes, it starts to uh, stutter along the way. You'll see. And, uh, but even so, I just take it and I start, I put it up against this, I register my hand, and I'm pushing down here because I'm not so worried about this cutting up front. I just want to make sure where I'm at cuts exactly the way I want it. So I'm pushing like that. That is distracting. I can see that out of the corner of my eye. Can you hear it jumping a little bit? It's like rippling along the way. That's because crosscut saws do have like a knifing effect supposedly and they're not great at removing uh, like curls. So as you know when you plane or when you saw with the grain you get a lot of uh, like curling effects of the shavings. Alright, I've got a very shallow trench at this point, so I'm going to just keep establishing it. And then I actually have this other saw, which is kind of like a hybrid uh, saw here from Harbor Freight. And it seems to cut this a little bit better. So. And you can see it's just knifing up uh, fibers of wood at this point. All right, so now I'm going to switch over to oh, but you know what? I sh yeah, 
and switch over. All right, so there's a groove I have right there. And I'm just gonna, before I continue on, I'm gonna make sure this is exactly what I need. So I've got a ruler here. Do I have a quarter inch? Yes, I do. I have just under three eighths of an inch there, which is good. So again, I'll probably just make sure I'm leaving more on this, on the one side, you know, but in, in any case, it's gonna be fine. So I'm gonna flip it now, do the same thing. Okay. This is actually the most annoying part of the whole process is doing all the setup work. It feels like you should just be getting going, you know, just going on with it and trying to do it. But I will say that if you take your time setting up, you're going to be happy with the result. So I'm just fine tuning exactly where this board's going to sit. I'm actually going to put it back a little bit. There we go. Same thing again. Yep, that's right. Okay. Concentrating on the back of the saw. For me, that's the way it works best. The added benefit here is you're registering up against an edge that's square, hopefully, and that'll help you uh, get a square plumb curve or whatever. I can say that if I did this more, I would have already made a, a curving plane by now because this is terribly inconvenient. I wandered there. There too. And that's because the shavings pile up and they push it out. It's not a bunch of sawed dust as you might think. So the preparation work is almost done. Oh wait, I lost the cap to that. I'll have to keep that in mind. What I'm going to do now is come back with my rip saw. Now that it's encumbered by it the height of that board. And I'm going to show you down the length here. <laughs> oh yeah. Oh, exactly. Yeah. A little bit of glue. That's such a good point. I never take them off, but that cap fell off and I'm kind of, there it is. Yeah, that's exactly right. And then to the person who said, como vim parar aqui? So yeah, I don't know how you did, Diane Cardoso, but yeah, bem-vinda, I'm assuming uh, you're a girl, but yeah, bem-vinda. So I'm not trying to show off or anything, but my wife's Brazilian and I teach Spanish, so hey, e aí Brasil, tudo bom? Uh, I, I, I learned Portuguese to be able to speak with my in-laws, of course, and uh, we teach our, our kids Portuguese, we speak mostly Portuguese in the home. Like I said, I teach Spanish, so that's my life. So yeah, I have a lot of 
Brazilian community in my life, which is cool. But so I'm going to come back with the rip saw now, which has these teeth that are filed flat across. Yeah, you're welcome. Thanks for being here, everybody, by the way. So I'm just going to come back and then deepen that curve. Like I said, this is annoying work, but I promise if you do this work, the resawing is really quite straightforward. Oi, that's kind of embarrassing, right? Did I ever tighten that panel up after I loosened it? Don't think so. So this one I can say that, oh, thanks for the, uh, the compliment, by the way, on the Portuguese. All right, so that's that side. I don't know how deep that is, but if you take a look, you can see. That's, as far as I'm concerned, that's pretty good. I don't want to go too, too deep on that curve because then you risk taking it out of square. So I want to make sure it's within my lines that I've marked. Now I'll flip it over. Same thing. The difference here, there's a big knot. Well, there was a knot, I cut it out. There, I'm writing on the shape, the, the sawdust here. And I think in a second I'll be ready. There's that. Here's the curve. It's slightly offset, as you might notice, but that's because uh, there's a little bit of a cup in this board. And so the bottom line is actually right there where those two lines overlap. So the last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to try and connect them across the top. And I'm not so concerned about that. But you can start at the back like this. And then gradually lay the saw down. Just a guide more than anything. Then I'll do the same on this one. And we're very close.
So do you see I'm keeping my hand on the saw just as a balance and as a reference point? It's kind of like a fence for your plane or for your or whatever. And what it does, it doesn't let it skip off to that side. So I'm just using three fingers like that. And maybe you can't see it because it's a little down, but. All right, so I'm gonna bring you over to this side so you can sort of see my technique as I'm sawing. Now, if I do have problems with my technique, feel free to correct me. I'm not an expert, but I, I, I just am a hobbyist, and so I like to try. But also, before I get going, what's the largest or widest board that you ever have resawn by hand, or in general? Like, have you ever had to resaw something really wide? Oh, hey, Etio. Etheu, is that how you say it? Etheu. Um, good to see you here. What's the widest one you've ever resawn in general? Have you ever done anything by hands? Uh, and I don't know, what are some tips you can give us uh, as far as the community is concerned to, to do it well? So, I have a choice. I can start on this here, on this big knot, which is really beautiful. I can start here at the top, where it's probably easier, and I can establish my curve. I'm thinking I will start on the knot first when I'm, my hand, when I'm not so tired. So I'll start here, and essentially what I'm going to do is I'm going to angle the board quite dramatically. And I have that line here. Let me show you. I didn't actually show you. I've got that. I've got that curve. So I have like an eighth inch or more curve most of the way around, except at the top it's maybe a sixteenth. I've got my reference. I'm going to try and keep my reference face on the one side. So I'm always trying to preserve that side and keep it um, at, well again, as uh, square as possible as I'm cutting. So I'm gonna angle this, I don't know, but this is gonna be centered right over my vise. Mm -hmm. And uh, here we go. So you can, um, since this is a knot, I'm gonna be very light on it. I've got my body off to the side. I'm not trying to crowd my bench here. If you look at my body angle here, I'm not trying to bring in my arm like this. I'm trying to give it room so my elbow can flow free here. And let me actually start more like that to get past that. And since my deep kerf is on the side, I'm gonna use that at an angle down to follow it. And then I'm going to air, always be checking my top as well. Hey Argentina, como estas? Leandro, todo bien? So, you can see I've already cut down like, I don't know, half inch, maybe more. A good saw should do the work for you. You're going to put effort into it, don't get me wrong, but I should not be forcing it. All right, at the top, you can see it's following the curve. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna let the back of the saw here, the towards the hand of uh, the handle, dig in, and that's that. I'm gonna now I'm gonna flip it around. See what happens is your body, or maybe your sawing technique, unless you're really really good, and I'm not. Your sawing technique might drift one way. Maybe it's because of you, maybe it's because your saw, the way it's set up. And you want to make sure that you're evening that out. So everybody, from what I can tell, recommends just keep flip-flopping the board end over end. Now I put the reference face in, which is kind of difficult to avoid, so. But that's fine. I've got my marks here so I can remember. This is the side over now that I want to really make sure is, is perfect. Mostly concentrating on, on moving down this edge. Okay, now I've wandered a little bit up top, which is not a problem, because I'm going to come back now and connect these two. I'm going to actually move them much lower. In the vise. You know what, I 
right, there it is. I've got, this is actually, I'm sure, some sort of paraffin wax. I really don't know, but it's when I was a kid, well, uh, when I was 16, so I was, yeah, I was a teenager. I, uh, I was snow, used to snowboard a lot, and this is what I would do to wax my snowboard, and now I use it for my saws. Never used it up, because it's surprisingly, uh, I don't know, surprisingly sparks how much it puts on at a time. I'm down, I don't know, it doesn't matter, I'm down a half inch. Now I'm gonna bring the board back up. I've got a really clearly defined line, as you can see. Now, I mean, honestly, at this point, you're not done, you have all the work to do, but you really should not have a problem. I, again, I'm always angling it, and I'm just gonna go slow. Sort of alternating my technique between nibbling away at the top here very carefully and then nibbling away at the bottom here on my edge and whatever I'm doing I'm making sure that I'm concentrating on on keeping it nice and within that curve or within the line I've already cut then then you sort of do one then do the other and then you then it creates like a little peak or a triangle in the middle and then you just saw that down Oh man, a 13 inch wide piece of, of walnut? Oh my gosh, do you have any pictures of it? Cause that would be, that's a moment you gotta capture for sure. But bandsaw, seriously, you might be able to see my, uh, I have a porter cable in the background and that really doesn't do much. And that's basically, I, I could have done this uh, with a machine if I had the machine. Uh, I've definitely committed to doing the hand tools on this particular build just because, uh, but I really would have preferred to do it on a bandsaw. Uh, because, I don't know, I was really nervous about doing it by hand. Now I'm less nervous, but uh, I just, I don't trust my bandsaw. I've never been able to get that sucker going so perfectly that I've, I'm guaranteed a great result. I, it goes well, but I mean, I'd love to see the, a 13 inch wide. That'd be amazing. <laughs> Now I'm just gonna flip it. I sort of put my hand on top because I kind of get nervous about it slipping out or something and it's nice, it feels good and comfortable to me so hey, I'm not pushing that hard though. <laughs> I'm actually going to come back and do the top now, real quick. Alright, it's going perfectly. Alright, so as you can see, I'm now about three inches down. and. You're thinking, wow, this is going to take, what, 10 hours? Actually, it's probably 30 more minutes of work at this point. Which is still quite a bit.
But uh, one thing I want to make sure I mention is that with a piece this wide, thanks, uh, thanks Andrea. With a piece this wide, it's going to be difficult to eject all the shavings or the the dust. I mean, you can see it's I'm collecting quite a bit here, but anything that this is cutting, right? If you're cutting right here, which you are, this part doesn't come out of the wood, so it's going to stay there, and it might bind things up. Oh, hey, babe, that's my wife. In casa con Joyce and Malaysi. Uh, so that's my wife's account, which is probably why there's Brazilians here because uh, uh, she has a pretty big YouTube account, and uh, yeah, I'm pretty proud of her. Anyways, uh, the reason why it gets stuck or it might bind is because you're building up little tiny pieces in here. So you have to just make sure that you're always making the effort to push it out, push the dust out. Okay? I mean, it's it's just logical. So I hope I'm not offending you by stating the obvious here. I can tell I'm right here. Do you hear the difference in the sound? I hit that knot, which goes through to the other side. Listen to it. I'll, I'll try and avoid it and then listen to me hit it. Not hitting it. You hear when I drag it over? It's much harder. Oh, and I can tell I'm riding on a bunch of sawdust, so I'm gonna flip it. The reason why I can tell I'm riding on thought is, well, you see that? Also, because it's not cutting as efficiently, I'm feeling it glide rather than scrape. So, oh, you see all that? I'm, this is just sawdust being ejected now. fighting chance and I'm also gonna, I'm gonna lay this down a little bit you can see I'm losing my breath a little bit I got water oh I know right I would totally love to have a rubo frame shut this off actually I saw on um, on my subscription feed today and of all trades is making a rubo frame saw today and I was like crap <laughs> the day I want to do this that's exactly what I need but uh, I don't know I haven't done it yet because I'm, I'm a little cheap I, I'll tell you that the kits are like, I don't know, a couple, some, a couple bucks, which is not expensive. But, I don't know. Maybe I'm a glutton for punishment. So now I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to lay it down a little bit more. And this will help eject the shavings a little, or the dust a little bit more. Hold on, let me actually. There we go. Now I'm going to concentrate on the kerf here. As you can see, I'm a third of the way through on the kerf side. Oh, linear feet. Good question. Linear feet wise. I'm going to say this is two feet. It's actually 30 inches and a little tiny bit. 30, maybe a quarter. So there's eight inches wide. It's, yeah, exactly eight inches wide by, like I said, 30 and a quarter. And actually, I don't have to resharpen mid-process, mid at least not that I've found. Well, something that I do to test if my saw is sharp is if I put my hand on there and sort of just put pressure on my palm or on my thumb, and if it kind of is inconvenient, if it feels like, like it's hurting my hand, I feel like that's a good, good and sharp for now uh, for what I need to do. Uh, if you are able to pull your finger on, in my opinion, if you're able to pull your finger along and it's not like trying to catch your finger, can you kind of hear? 
it's pulling, it's actually cutting into the callus or whatever on my fingertip. Uh, not cutting it, but it is digging it. If you can pull it and it's really just sort of gliding rather than trying to dig it, you're definitely not sharp enough. That's how I test sharpness is I pull it, I like sort of grab it. Oh, that this kind of hurts. You know, it's still got enough point. And then I just look at it, you know, what does it look like? How, uh, how rounded is the top, you know? Actually though, I will need to do a little bit more of, uh, of a better sharpening. They're my teeth. They're pretty pointy looking. And uh, I showed at the beginning they were very shiny, so that's because I just sharpened them. But so yeah, so that's what I do. That's how I go uh, think about sharpening. So if you have if you have any suggestions, let me know. Because like I said, I'm I'm not an expert. I'm just a hobbyist. That's riding on the sawdust. I'm just gonna flip it back. That's all it is, is just you keep on flipping the board. Yeah, resign. Hey, Castell. come through the top again and when I do this you'll see how fast it can actually move since I've removed the kerf on both sides okay four down again I'm talking I'm going slow but I don't like to be too close to this when it's pinching because it could bind the, bind the saw. Oh, you're welcome. Thanks, man. So now I'm down to here. Feel that the that the width of the board is like this now, right there, and then you can see it's like right there. So I'm going to start angling it back down again, and then come both sides and then go down. This is how I do it again because I really just want a clean piece and I don't trust myself enough to just go straight across the whole way. So. Anybody still here from the very, very beginning? Oh man, I love a Blackburn frame saw, yeah. Yeah. Do you hear it? A lot of sawdust in there. 
I will start say that my arm's starting to get tired. Yeah, this is for part of the sideboard. It's uh here, since my arm's a little tired. Okay, watch out, it's gonna get a little um motion sick here. But I'll do my best. I'm gonna rest my arm real quick here. So I'm sort of up in the air about this. I'm pretty sure I'm gonna leave this divider here because I like it and I can put trim on it and rest it on the trim. I mean, rest the trim on this. So I have two pieces. It'll be this large, which is like almost 18 inches by almost 15 inches, which is why I need at least like an 18 or 19 inch piece. Well, more like 20. And then uh, 18, uh, eight inches wide so I can book match it, right? Now I've decided to do that whole 30 inch piece without, you know, just because if I had cut it in half, yes, I could have made the panel, I could have cut it in two smaller panels, but I'm really only going to remove like five inches. And I don't know. I just felt like I'd rather do the whole panel at once and have it very consistent, which I can do, I think, better uh, just laying it all out and doing it all, doing it all at once. So I don't know. So there you go. It's going to be this side here or that side. I haven't decided yet. And like I said, here's, here's the one I did the other day. Turned out great. And ready to get back to it? I am. All right. Well, I don't want to show the, the computer, mostly because, I, from, again, for me, it's kind of distracting. Well, I'm going to show it less, I guess. All right, so this is where we are. We're definitely a third of the way through. Uh, it'll go faster as we keep going. My curb is closing ever so, so slightly at the top. So I'm gonna have to start wedging it. By the way, yeah, uh, Castro said he likes to see all the tedious work too. Well, he likes that I show the tedious work, which I appreciate because, as you see, as you can see, my uh, my pace of uploading, I'm close to halfway now. I think halfway is right here. So, my pace has slowed down because I mean, the school year, of course, for me is very busy. But uh, I have some videos backlogged. I'm quite farther along in reality than I'm in on on the on the internet and YouTube. But, uh, I don't know. I just really like hand tools. It's, it, believe it or not, it's relaxing for me, so why not? And since my kids' room is right up there and there's no insulation between us, I mean, I could put it, but I don't know. It's, it's really convenient. I don't have huge machines or anything, so that would help, <laughs> for sure. But, I mean, I've sort of, I don't know, I've sort of caught, bought into it. There's a nice community around it all. I know you don't need my philosophy, but... I know, a lot of people are asking me when they, like, oh, why don't you just use a machine? Well, I guess, I don't know, why don't I? But I guess I don't. Plus, I don't have them. So.
But yeah, again, to finish that statement off, uh, I just was, I just really want to do this whole project without uh, machines and just, just for the challenge. So as you can see on other videos, I've had no problems just using them when I need them. Uh, like the bandsaw is so great for certain things like this. So. Like there's something hard here and I can see the remnants of a knot but I don't know it feels like it's I'm losing a little momentum now I will say I'm pushing harder down because I want to burn through that because it's slowing me down quite a bit Still checking, my kerf is completely intact at this point, still great. All right, so my kerf, my, uh, my actual remaining wood here is kind of like that. Well, let's see how fast it burns through it. Getting close to the point where I've got to actually flip it end over end. Yeah, maybe that's it. Uh, 32 inch frame saw, 20 minutes. Nice, great job. Thir is, that, is that a 13 foot long 2x6? Wow, well, well done. It does, I don't know, I, I tuned it up before I went, but it sounds like it's getting dull, right? But it feels pretty sharp still. I don't know. Oh, you know what? Have you, can you see here? I'm approaching the knots, so I wonder if that has anything to do with it. Maybe not, but... Right here is where it's like it on the front. So maybe the front is, is uh, dull. Yeah, I will say it's 
Maybe it's getting dull because it feels less efficient at this point for sure. I'm going to flip it though because I don't want to run into the vise. Same process all over again, starting on the corners. Drew, I, I think you could be onto something. I definitely, I went over it with the file before I started. Maybe I messed up the geom geometry or I don't know. Maybe it's just getting dull because it was doing much better at the beginning. So I think I could also be getting tired. <laughs> That little uh, squeak at the end when I tighten it down is annoying. Man, cutting through the sapwood is like easy. Oh! Did I pause? Are we locked up here? I'm showing that I'm locked up. All right, I'm gonna, it says I'm still streaming. Is anybody still there? If you're still there, anything, let me know. <laughs> okay, what I'm gonna do is if, uh, yeah, it's still locked up on me. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to restart the stream, if you're hearing this. Ah, choppy sound, still the picture. So I'm going to restart the stream. Uh, hope you don't, hope I don't lose you. All right, so you're still there, but no picture. Okay. All right, sorry everybody, I'm going to restart the stream.